Hi, this is Albert Yu of the Albert and Gloria Yu Real Estate Team at LocationFirst.ca. Today I want to continue the topic of how to get the best mortgage rate out there. Specifically, I want to show you how to actually negotiate the rate. And when I say negotiation, I think a lot of people start cringing because they don't like to negotiate, but it's really simple. And you're actually not negotiating the rate, you're really, I guess, determining the character of the person you deal with. You're really, you're really interested in the process of how you got that quote unquote best rate. Let me explain. Assuming you, uh, you did some research, as I mentioned in part one, you know what the online banks are offering. Let's say they're offering right now 3.99% for a five year fixed rate. Uh, now you go to your local representative at a local traditional bank like TD, RBC, Scotia, BMO, uh, or even a mortgage broker, and just simply ask them, what is the best five year fixed rate mortgage you can get me? And see what they say. And you're basically gonna compare and see, well, for instance, if they offer you 4.29, you know that that's not the truth because, like I said before, you can get a much better rate uh, at a traditional bank than you can at an online bank. So you know, 4.29 compared to 3.99, they obviously don't know that you've done some research. So you can talk to them and tell them, well, you did some research and how come the online banks seem to lower? I've, as soon as you mention that, they're going to realize that you've done some homework and they're going to say, well, we can match that. Well, here's the thing. Now, like I said, you can do better. So they can say, well, we can match that and give you a little bit of a discount. Let's say a 0.1%. Like I said, usually you can do better than that, more than just 0.1%. Now, you might think you got yourself a good deal because, well, they're doing better than the online banks. But the fact is, when you talk to the person, at first they gave you a much higher rate. It wasn't until you mentioned that you did some research that they offered a lower rate. So basically, you don't really have the best rate going forward. If the rates change, you have no idea of knowing if this person is going to give you the best rate unless you do this process again. So my suggestion would be is instead of saying anything, when they ask you, when you ask, when you just ask them what is the best rate out there and see what they say. Don't answer them. Just tell them you're shopping around. Tell them you just want to hear their answer. If they ask you who have you gone to, just say you haven't gone to anyone. If you haven't, and if you have, just say you know what, I'm not allowed to say and I just want to know what's the best rate you can give me. You give them a chance now by telling them that. And talk to some other people and you want to really see if they're going to give you the best rate. Now some of these people you meet with, they might say, well, we can't guarantee you anything unless you sign an application. Uh, the reason being is, when, and it's correct, uh, your rate you get is actually based on your credit score. And by signing an application, it gives them the right to do a credit check. However, if you do too many credit checks, uh, it's going to actually hurt your credit score, which might actually might hurt the rate you get. So therefore, I encourage you is, you can tell them, you know what, tell them the truth. You're shopping around and you're going to commit to someone but you just want to make sure you're getting the best rate. And then tell me if you really can't do anything for me unless I sign a credit check, tell them, well you know what, can you just tell me what is the best rate you gave someone recently that did do a credit check that has a good credit score and see what they say. So again, like I said, you're not really, sh getting, you're not really trying to get the best rate. You're really trying to see the type of person uh, you're going to deal with. Because for instance, let's say you get a really good rate and you had to haggle for that. And then, like I said, haggling is not very fun unless you're a real estate agent like myself and you enjoy doing that. Uh, but if you don't get a home within that period of time, usually four to six months, you didn't got to do the whole thing all over again. But instead, what I suggest is if you go shop around and meet different, I guess, financial representatives, you're really shopping around or negotiating with the person himself. You're really judging or determining the person you're dealing with. Because you know if you went to, let's say, five different people and four out of the five you had to actually haggle with them, tell them you did some research online, tell them you got this rate this bank and they had to, yeah, that might be great. But if one person actually said, here's my best rate and you told them flat out, you don't have to haggle, then you know that person's actually pretty good to deal with. You just they're a pretty person of good character. You told them up front, you're just shopping around, and now they gave you the best rate. Well, that means in five months time when that previous rate expired, you know when you go back to them, you're gonna get the best rate. Just some final tips. If you don't wanna haggle, I guess, you can always go ask your realtor. I think a good professional realtor will have an idea of what are the best rates out there for you. And also make sure when you do talk to these people that you're comparing apples to apples. So make sure you ask them, when they give you a rate, what is that rate? Is it a five year rate, four year rate, is it fixed? Is it variable? What are the uh, what are the prepayment terms? Twenty percent, twenty five. You want to make sure, like I said, you're not comparing apples to oranges.